Hi everyone, I'm just making this quick video to let you know that I've added more documentation to the Biogen wiki explaining how the modify styles work. In this wiki you'll also find different tips and tricks to get interesting combinations of effects. So what I'll do in this video is give you a quick rundown of all the different styles available so you can see how to use them. So I have a basic cube here, and when demonstrating the modify styles it's generally a good idea to have a good amount of geometry on the object. So what I'm going to do is press Ctrl and Free to add a subdivision surface modifier with three levels of subdivision. And then in the end menu here, uh, if you look at the buy tools tab, and of course you can open and close this by pressing the N key, you'll find the panel Biogen Modify. Under here there's a drop down list uh, called Modify Mode, and the one we're going to start with is called the Destructor, which is the new mode added with Biogen version 6. Under Displacement Type, we can choose the type of generated noise texture that the Displacement Modifier will use. I'm going to leave it on Musgrave for now, but these will give you different effects which you can experiment with. If I click Apply Style, it will construct the appropriate modifier stack. And if we take a look at the object, one thing you'll notice is that the top and the bottom of the subdivided cube have been shaved off. This is because the style uses a build modifier. It may be appropriate for you to enable randomize, uh, depending on the shape of your object, just to get a more equal distribution of the effect. And if you do this as well, you can uh, reduce and increase the start value of the build modifier to choose how much of the object appears and disappears. If I find a good value for this, then I can demonstrate some of the other effects. If you go to the Displace modifier, which is the first one that the style adds, then by increasing and decreasing this, we can get some interesting effects. And let's say we increase the amount of subdivisions, then you can see how this gets much more interesting. So this looks like a kind of shattered glass effect as we increase the strength, but notice how some of the original shape is maintained. And that's because with the Musgrave generated noise texture, it doesn't affect every area, and we can actually take a look at this. There are black and white spots representing like high and low intensity. We can invert the influence by going for a negative strength, and increase the influence by going for a positive strength. If I change the generated noise texture type to something like wood, then you can see how where we have these black and white lines, the geometry will adjust appropriately. What I'm going to do is set this back to Musgrave so we can carry on experimenting. So let's say I go for a slightly more shattered look. If we go down to the smooth modifier, we can increase the repeat value to smooth out the individual islands a bit. So right now this looks a bit more like a sort of visual effect where something has exploded or splattered. So if you added the right kind of shader, you can get some interesting visual effects with this. Another thing to know about the smooth modifier is that if you disable the X, Y, or Z axes respectively, you can get some interesting stretching effects, which might be good for some sort of glitching abstract style. Also, if we go to the solidify modifier, by increasing or decreasing the values here, we can control the extrusion of these individual islands. And then in the same modifier, if we disable fill rim, we can get this interesting holographic effect, where the surfaces of the islands appear twice. So say I build the effect how I like it, I can give it an emissive material, increase the value here, Set the render mode to EV and take a look. Bloom is a bit strong, let's reduce that. I'm going to do another material but give this a slightly different color. So you can see how you can get some interesting values with the destructor. Uh, this is good for surfaces and visual effects, so I encourage you to play around with it. So starting from a subdivided cube again, we're going to take a look at the hard surface faceting mode. We'll notice some extra parameters here to start with. So just in case you know exactly what you want to start with, you can set these here, but I'm just going to apply the default settings for now. And if we go to the modifier stack, you can see it's being constructed. Of course, we can increase the amount of subdivision levels, which will give us a more interesting result. But this will, of course, increase the computation time. Just like the destructor mode, by changing the strength value in the displace modifier, we can change the influence of the generated noise texture. So with positive strength, we can increase the influence, and negative strength, we invert the influence. Naturally, this changes the look of the valleys that are generated in between the different facets. By going to the edge split modifier and changing the split angle, we can change the number of edges that become grooves. This will be more apparent if I zoom in here. And then if we go to the solidify modifier and change the thickness, it of course changes the thickness of these individual islands. So you can get some strange surface effects if you like. This may be good for abstract motion graphics. And of course if we go to the dangerous bevel modifier, we can disable clamp overlap, which will likely give us some insane results to start with. Yep. And then uh, but we, we can reduce the offset value. If you hold shift while scrubbing the values side to side, you can change them at a slower rate. 
whereas if you don't hold shift, things go a bit mad. But of course, with clamp overlap disabled, you will end up with some anomalous results because when creating the facets, some of the edges are going to be really tightly packed together. This will especially look strange with a high thickness value in the solidify modifier because the facets will start overlapping each other. But again, this is good if you're not interested in doing any properly manifold stuff for like, you know, 3D printing or rigging, but maybe not so good if you want completely closed meshes with perfect geometry. Okay, the next style is a bit more tricky to explain. It's the hard surface skin style. This is not really one that you should apply to pre-existing meshes, rather one that you should build from the ground up. So let me demonstrate. If I create a plane and I move the vertices here uh, towards the center, let me add a mirror modifier and set the bisect on, clipping, increase the merge distance slightly, then pull this vertex out a bit. What will happen when you apply the hard surface skin mode is it will add a skin modifier among other things. So the edges that construct this object will become pathways that the skin will be built around. You will see this when I apply. See here. So what this does is basically apply the same faceting effect that comes from the hard surface faceting mode, but do it around a path. And we can of course move the vertices in this path. And if we hold control and press A, we can adjust the influence of it. And when we go back to object mode, you will see that uh, this has been recalculated. Now, one of the limitations of doing this is that if we create a new pathway that comes off and it's naturally thinner than other parts of the mesh, then if we keep doing this, some of the object will get missed out as it tries to like calculate the influence of the skin modifier over the pathways. One way to get around this issue is to increase the octree depth in the remesh modifier. Of course, you can only do this a few times before you need to continue increasing the octree depth to match the shape. But again, that's a trade-off that you need to consider for yourself depending on the shape of your object. There are some interesting effects you can do with this. You can increase the width percent for the bevel modifier to get these interesting edge effects. However, of course, this will dramatically increase the amount of geometry, which is not so good if you've got large scale objects like this. In fact, to demonstrate the rest, I might as well get rid of some of these points. If we go to the edge split modifier, which is further down, by disabling this, we can remove the grooves that are generated along the edges of these facets. This may be good if you want to create some more manifold type objects for body parts of like robotics, for example. We can also change the thickness of the individual facets by using the solidify modifier. And naturally, if we have edge split enabled, then these facets will be isolated and then extrude along their own normals. And finally, by adjusting the last displace modifier, we can inflate the whole shape. So this style comes from the work of Emiliano Colantoni, who created the Mechify tool for Blender, which originally uses a voxel remesher to reconstruct the shape, but this has not been perfectly recreated here. I've just taken the modifier stack and applied the principle to pre-existing shapes. So again, it's useful as a construction tool, but not so much in being applied to objects with high amounts of geometry. But I can just demonstrate to you quickly the effect that it will have. Say I take a cube with a subdivision surface level of 2, so nothing too high. If I apply the style here, it will take a little while to calculate. And notice that after all this time, it has created a mess of a result with... Whoa. Anyway, we're moving on to the hard padding mode now. Uh, this one is a much more friendly mode, very simple to understand. Once we apply it, it takes all the faces that were originally part of the mesh and just creates pads from them, which is extremely useful for creating paneling, you know, for greebling along, I don't know, along armor, spaceship parts, etc. Uh, the beauty of this mode is that it does follow the geometry underneath. So say I create a plane, move this out here, go into edit mode, I'll subdivide it a couple of times, and then I can take the knife tool and just start creating, I don't know, like a random segment here. And I'll also do an extra line inside. So if I apply this style now, you'll see that it matches the grooves I've created with the knife tool. Something else that's quite nice about this is if I create another plane, increase it subdivision level of four, I'll make it a simple mode, go to vertex. So oh, I'll apply it first. Go to vertex, use O for proportional editing and increase this, we can see if I reapply it here, that the mode works perfectly fine on curved surfaces. Also, if I delete 
the entire stack here. You'll notice that triangulate as a value is able to be enabled before you apply the style. This is just to speed up in case you know exactly what you want and you want to triangulate all your faces before you apply it. All it does is apply a triangulate modifier and you can see the effect this has. If you want to increase the thickness of the pads, then you can do this by increasing the thickness value of the solidify modifier, or actually decreasing in this case. Increasing will uh, make it go inwards. We can see this here. And decreasing will make it go outwards. The next one to look at is the metal shell mode. This one has been extremely useful for me in some of my previous work because it's just fantastic for creating quick grating and fencing effects, especially in sci-fi scenes. Of course, this one also has triangulation that we can enable as well. So if we disable this, we'll keep the quad layout, but triangulation looks really cool with this effect. And of course, if we go down to the wireframe modifier, we can increase the thickness of the wires. And I really like how the connecting pieces between all the different joints here also grows with this. Moving on, we have the organic shell mode, which is naturally the non hard surface equivalent of the metal shell. There are more options to set here, but we'll just apply the defaults. See how it creates these perforations, but there are some of varying size. Of course, this one relies more heavily on displacement, so we can increase the value. And if we decrease the value, then we can see how the shape collapses in on itself. But this will create some pinching regions. If we go down to the smooth modifier, you can see that there's quite a high number for the repeat value, but we can decrease this to increase the chaos of the shape. And of course, we can reduce the wire thickness by changing the thickness value in the wireframe modifier. And of course, we can increase it as well and just make a complete mess of the scene. But I don't know, it might be a quite cool virus effect. This next one is a bit more abstract, called Midge Cell. Uh, when we apply it, it you know completely disregards the original shape of the mesh and just creates this more blocky type abstract pathway system thing. We can increase the resolution of it by increasing the oak tree depth value in the remesh modifier. We can, of course, increase the thickness of the wireframe modifier again. And one little thing you can also do is actually manually add a bevel modifier and then disable the clamp overlap value and then decrease it. And I actually quite like how the lighting bounces off of the uh, corners of this shape. Now this Midge cell effect is actually named after Midge, insert last name pronunciation here. I really like his work and I'm sure that many of you have already heard of him because he does really cool, abstract, just weird divergent things. And I picked up a tip about this modifier stack from one of his videos, so please go and check out his channel. Now we move on to a couple of uh, weirder modes, which start with FX because they're more intended for creating effects than actual geometry. So the first one is point cloud, and you'll notice uh, there's an option here for create an emissive material with it. You'll see why, but I'm going to leave this off for now. If I press apply style, it takes the original mesh and creates a bunch of these small points. Now the way it does this, because I think a few people have been confused in the past about this, is it takes each of the original faces and shrinks them down into their center. So if I increase the subdivision levels, you can see there are more points. Now naturally you'd think that a point cloud would be created from the different vertex points of a mesh, but this does not do that. As I say, it takes the faces and just shrinks them down. Now this is actually really, really good for creating holographic effects. So if I go into Eevee, Without the emissive material applied, you can see it's a bit boring. That's why we have an option to automatically create one while applying the effect. But I can apply this manually. And let's say I increase the strength of the emission, bloom values. And you can see how nice it looks. Now, of course, we can duplicate this and scale it down and get some weird and wacky abstract effects. But let's take a look at the modifier stack again. By displacing the points, we can get some really cool looking effects and animations going. Notice how by reducing it, we can get the points to collapse in on themselves, adjusted by the generated noise texture that we have applied, and also explode back out again. Yeah, that looks really cool. But by increasing it, we can expand the influence of the point cloud, while also creating a bit of a glitch type effect. Now, as I say, this responds to the generated noise texture. Again, we're using Musgrave by default, but we can get much more chaotic with noise. Say, for example, if I increase this now, look at that. That's a proper explosion right there. But I digress. Let's reset this back to a more sensible level. There is a secondary displacement modifier right at the end. 
Now what this does is once the general shape has been constructed, we can increase and decrease the strength value just to once again offset the position of the points. What this does is more than shifting their position, it stretches the influence of the individual points throughout the world. So by changing this value, you can get these really interesting line effects going. Again, this will be just fantastic for motion graphics, abstract animations, just really cool science fiction, emissive type work. The last mode is maybe not as exciting, but still quite interesting, and is called FX Pixelate. And if we apply this, you'll see that maybe nothing happens to start with. And that's because <laughs> with the last version of Biogen, I had to adjust the basic value for the build modifier to match changes that were made to it, where the default value would show no holes present. But it seems that with recent versions of Blender, they've actually changed that change back. So now you have to increase the value of the start value of the build modifier to be able to see the points to start appearing. And also, again, just like the destructor mode, by enabling randomize, we make the selection of the points that disappear uh, more uniform. So what Pixelate does is it just selects faces and makes them disappear, just like pixels on a TV screen. By increasing the subdivision value, we get a more interesting effect again. And you can change the thickness of this shell by adjusting the thickness value in the solidify modifier, preferably negative. So yeah, again, more just for abstract styles. So this has been a breakdown of the different modifier styles. Hopefully you found this interesting. Again, as I say, all of this is explained on the documentation. If you go to curtisholt.wiki, it will take you to the Notion page. Then from there, you can go to Biogen, then Modifier Styles, then Directory of Modifier Styles, and you will find all of them in here. Make sure to tag me in any work you make with this tool. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.